So we have been told that caching improves performance, but is that totally true? What would happen if we try to apply caching to something like Mark Hansen garbage collector? Will it improve its performance? Today we understand the key patterns that are essential for our caching to work. If those patterns does not exist, our caching would be ineffective no matter how large of a cache you apply. The concept we discuss today is something that holds true universally and is not just restricted to the worlds of garbage collector. Today we take an in-depth look into caching, how it works, why it works and understand why there would not be a significant performance improvement if we apply caching to our Mark Hansen garbage collector. But before we move forward, I want to talk to you about a code based course of system design that I have been running since March 2021. Right? If you are looking to learn system design from the first principles, this course is for you. Yeah? Because this is a code based course, it will not just be me rambling a semi-optimized solution thinking it's the most amazing solution out there. Instead, it will be a collaborative environment where every single person who is part of the cohort will can pitch in his or her ideas and we will evolve our system around that. Right? Every single problem statement comes with a brainstorming session where we all together brainstorm and evolve our system. That's why everyone understands the kind of trade-offs we made while making that decision instead of just saying hey we'll use a particular queue we'll have the justification why we use only that queue why we use that particular database why sql why not no sql right how are we leveraging throughput how are we ensuring that our system scales that's the highlight of this course this course is taken by more than 500 engineers to date spanning nine countries and seven cohorts right people from all top companies have taken this course and the outline is very intriguing it's very exciting so we start with week one around, we start with the core foundation of the course where we design online offline indicator, then we try to design our own medium, then we go into database where we go in depth of database locking and take and see few very amazing examples of data log, uh, database locking in, uh, in action and how do we ensure that our system scales through that. Then the third week is all about going distributed where we design our load balancer. I'll walk you through the actual code of a, of, a, of a toy load balancer and understand how TCP connections are managed and how simple it is to build load balancer. Then week four is about all about social networks. Week five is all about building your own storage engines. Like we'll build that intuition on if you were to ever design your storage engine, how would you do that? Right. Then week six is about building high throughput systems. Seven is about building uh, IR systems, basically information retrieval systems and ad hoc designs where we design our own message brokers like SQS where we design distributed task scheduler and we conclude the course with week 8 where we talk about the super clever algorithms that has powered or that has made those systems possible. Right? I have also attached a video verbatim as is from my first code where we designed and scaled Instagram notifications. I will highly encourage you to check this video out. Right? And now back to the video. So as a quick refresher. Our mark and sweep garbage collection algorithm has two phases, the mark phase and the sweep phase. The idea of the mark phase is to start from the root nodes, which contains your global variable, global thread uh, uh, instances and whatnot. It starts from there, starts marking the objects that are reachable from them. And once it starts marking the objects reachable from them, these objects are live objects right? because they are reachable from the root node. The objects that are not reachable from the root nodes are typically something which is garbage, which requires a cleanup. So this way, the unreachable objects after the mark phase are swept out and hence the phase is called sweep phase. Right? So garbage collection is a very important activity. If you do not do garbage collection, our memory usage would or, or we would have or we would have gigantic memory leaks in our program because they are not getting garbage collected and the memory consumption will over time will continuously shoot up. So that's why we need automatic garbage collection and this garbage collection needs to be extremely fast because we do not want the CPU to use its cycle to do garbage collection. We want our garbage collection to take as minimal of a time as possible so that we get enough CPU cycles for our actual business logic. Say if you are building the next Facebook, you want CPU to do uh, to basically spend time creating a post, liking a post versus doing garbage collection. So we know that uh, mark and sweep is as simple as a DFS problem. So can we use caching to improve the performance? Like if, if I would say like, hey, let's improve the performance of my garbage collector. The first thing that would come to your mind would be, hey, can I cache something? Can I use caching to improve the performance of it or not? Right. So does that work over here? 
So in order to understand if caching would improve the performance and this again, it's very, uh, this is a very basically use case agnostic concept. You can apply it at any places. It's here, you are trying to establish the key patterns that caches exploit. Like if you are applying caching to a particular use case, it needs to satisfy few patterns. Then you would get performance benefit. Otherwise, caching is just that, that extra component that you are adding. <clears throat> so, in order to do that, uh, in order to understand that, let's see what exactly is a cache. So, a cache is literally anything, anything that stores data so that our future requests are served faster. Now, what what is a cache basically? It's like RAM for a disk. It's like L1 cache for your RAM. <clears throat> so the cache is something which is extremely fast and it sits very close to CPU so that you don't have to waste time doing that recomputation again. For example, the two classic things that we know we cache are first, which is result from previous computation. So if you have already spent time computing something, let's say you have spent time computing the blogs of a user, you cache it so that you don't have to fire that expensive SQL query again. Fine. Second is where we copy the data from a slower storage to a faster storage. For example, you know that um, a user has just logged in, then he or she is very likely to access the recent post that he or she made. So what if if you go, let's say this information is present in your database. What if you go to your database and fetch the data? It would take, let's say, 100 milliseconds for you to do it. But if you prefetch it and you keep it in your RAM, you can get it, you can serve it in 2 milliseconds. <coughs> so caching also means, like you can, like by caching, you can also mean that you are, you are keeping or you are pulling the data from a slower storage into a faster storage. Right? And here, the data that you would be pulling in into your faster storage should be like should, is likely to be accessed. If it is not likely to be accessed, you are then just wasting uh, your storage to pull that thing out from a store, slow storage and putting it in the faster storage. But this is what the idea of caching is all about. Like just to give you a perspective on uh, from memory onwards the cache. So if in order for you to extract a value or a range of value from your main memory if it takes 50 nanoseconds, like reading one value take 50 nanoseconds, then an L3 cache would do it in 10 nanoseconds, an L2 cache can do it in 5 nanoseconds, an L1 cache, which is <coughs> literally present in your CPU core, can do it in 1 nanosecond. Right, so it's a 50x improvement from your main memory. We think main memory is fast, L3 cache, L2 cache, L1 cache are even faster. And obviously they are much, much, much more expensive. Right? But that's the thing. If you know that something is really needed, instead of putting it in, like instead of you having the data in your main memory, which is 50x slower, you would want to put it in an L3 cache or an L2 cache or an L1 cache. Right? Which would, which would significantly boost your performance. So now comes the crux of it. Like, what are we looking at? What should we cache, right? When would adding a cache improve the performance of our application? So, if our application exhibits this two property, then caching would be effective. The two properties are temporal locality and spatial locality. <coughs> what temporal locality says is that a recently accessed memory location or data is more likely to be accessed again. Which means, let's say, if I have accessed a particular memory location, then I'm more likely to access that location again. Then I can put it in a cache. So that is temporal locality. Basically, temporal means time related. So it's time related locality. So the idea here is, if I'm accessing something, I'm more likely to access it again. For example, if I take example of a traditional Web2 application, it would be a blocking application. If I am on my profile and I am more likely to refresh the page, which means that the profile information of my as a user can be cached. So first call can be, can take some time, but if I'm more likely to access my own profile, I would be caching that information in a faster storage so that I can retrieve it faster and send it out. Right? 
that is first second is spatial locality spatial around space so what spatial locality says is that if a location is recently accessed the locations adjacent to it will be accessed soon right so for example <clears throat> one thing that works really well with spatial locality is our databases so on our databases everything is read as a block right so spatial locality if you know that if the query that you have fired is a select star query across all the rows your database engine would know that hey now this block is gone then this block will be read then this block will be read then this block will, will be read if it knows that a particular block is read you are very likely to access the adjacent block your database engine can actually prefetch that block and put it in the cache so that <coughs> and uh, sorry uh, so that and Uh, so that we don't have to make another disk I/O, it can prefetch it. It would give you, it will give your application a huge boost. That is spatial locality. Now for <coughs> caching to work, right? For caching to work, or for caching to not rather work, but for caching to give us a significant performance improvement, it needs to have at least one of these two: temporal locality, spatial locality. Otherwise, caching would not give you any performance benefit. Right? So. <coughs> the way modern hardware's work is something called as hardware prefetching or cache prefetching so the idea here is exactly the same that we talked about that if we know that a particular location is accessed the adjacent location is bound to be accessed soon then i'll just prefetch it and put it into my cache so that the next time or not next time so when that particular block is accessed it is present in your l1 cache or your cache in general <clears throat> right so this is how you would get a very significant performance boost in your use case so how how does this work so your cache transparently sits between your main memory or rather your slower storage and your access request so now what would happen is if let's say i took a purple block which is so let's say i have six disk blocks or i have six memory locations right a purple <coughs> a, a, sorry a, a blue a pink and then white so blue is the one that is recently accessed so the blue block will glow and sit into my cache so it is part of my cache your cache will be much smaller than your main memory right and now when i'm doing that when the one the blue block is getting pulled or is getting accessed my hardware would know that hey the pink block is adjacent to that very likely to be accessed so let me prefetch it so it would prefetch the pink block and put it into cache so next time when the request comes in for the pink block that's the first time that the request came in for the pink block it would do or it would not have to go to the main memory to get the data or to the slower storage to get the data it is already there in the cache right so your response time will be much faster here we are exploiting spatial locality <coughs> right and how the data prefetching works it works in two ways the first way is your hardware is intelligent enough the the modern cores of uh, intel amd arm pick your favorite processor they they access the memory uh, sorry they know the access pattern on how you are accessing the data <coughs> and they take the smart decision ki hey this data is more likely to be accessed so let me just prefetch it right so hardware are intelligent enough nowadays to take a call on prefetching second is most hardware exposes a prefetch instruction which you tell to the hardware ki hey this is something that i know will be required prefetch it it would take it and put it in the cache right so it like here we are going into details of hardware main memory to l1 cache but the same concept can be applied through your database redis as a cache and normal web to applications as well so the core idea of caching remains the same no matter what the application is your application needs to exhibit or your use case needs to exhibit spatial locality or temporal locality for it to leverage caching otherwise your if you add cache no matter how big you uh, add cache into not really you you'd gain you'd not gain a performance boost at all right so now can we leverage caching to speed up our garbage collection process the answer is no why and that's the fun part like we always think hey caching yeah we would get performance benefit now but with garbage collection that does not happen so why that was why that does not happen because 
our mark and sweep garbage collection does not exhibit a temporal locality nor a spatial locality now let me talk about it why <clears throat> so to leverage uh, the use case we should at least have temporal or spatial we know that now let's see how temporal locality is not meant <clears throat> so with temporal locality what we know is that where the temp uh, with mark and sweep garbage collector what we do is we have an object in memory right so the variable that we created or the class object or the class instance that we created it would have a mark bit right so during the mark phase we are starting from the root node going to all the objects that are reachable from them and setting the mark bit as five correct and that's when this iteration is continuously happening so here the object that you set the mark bit as one for for the object that you did you are never going to access that object again like immediately again you would be going through all the objects that are reachable and then you would be invoking the sweep phase <clears throat> right so which means and even in the sweep phase those objects are never accessed which were marked because that's where the sweep phase is all about <clears throat> so with marked bit set as one the object which are marked as live they are never accessed again if they are never accessed again even if you put it in your cache they are not getting any significant benefit not at all right so that's where adding a cache to your mark and sweep garbage collector would not solve because mark and sweep garbage collector is not exhibiting temporal locality right then let's see if it exhibits spatial locality <clears throat> spatial locality you know that with respect to spatial locality you would know that if you access the particular location you are very likely to access adjacent location over here but if we talk about the way mark and sweep garbage collector works is that what you do is you start with a particular object you mark that object as live you find all the object that are referenced from that object for example if i have an object for student then it might have a field called school which is a reference to a school object right so what i'll do i'll mark this student object as live then i'll go to the school object mark that object as live correct so the way this works is that it is doing a random look up on your memory because school object can be present somewhere uh, your uh, student object will be present somewhere in the memory they need not be adjacent if they need not be adjacent then if we try to cache the next object which is sitting next to your student object that is futile so then you what you would have to typically do is you would have to typically uh prefetch the object which is referenced from that other object and that is an explicit prefetching operation because your hardware cannot smartly do it it would not know what you are trying to do or what your algorithm is trying to do right there are ways to navigate that but you basically get the idea right it is not as straight forward so if your hardware exposes a prefetch then you might want to prefetch that other object and then the next object and then the next object. in any case that object is read it's kept in the memory but <clears throat> you're not getting significant performance out of it out of the box you might have to do you might have to pull some strings on your own do an explicit prefetch but it's still not solving the problem out of the box for you right so if you're going for a blunt spatial locality where you are caching the next adjacent object that is definitely not going to work in case of a mark and sweep garbage collector you have to do smart prefetching if you would ever want to optimize that and that too is not as straightforward uh, as not as straightforward as we would want it to be right because the data is not physically adjacently placed right and the lookups are going to be randomly in memory there are ways to optimize it but you basically get the idea on why spatial locality would not work <clears throat> but so now we have established that hey caching would not improve the performance by a massive margin then is there a small small scope small scope where basically caching would solve the problem or would improve performance not by a huge margin but a small margin obviously there are always like when you add cache if you are smart with respect to the access pattern you have you can still gain some performance out of it let me walk you through one of such use case in any programming language that you have you would have a very skewed distribution the skewed distribution would be that some objects or some type of objects 
are low cardinality objects which means they are fewer in numbers but they are referenced large number of times a simple example of that is type objects like for example i'm doing this as a very crude example right and i'll tell you how it actually happens in programming languages a very crude example is that <coughs> my student type object like let's say i have an object of type student so it would have a attribute called type it would have id name age school whatever you put in there the type would be the type student that would also be an explicit object that this is type student so student itself is an object like the type student itself will be an object right which will have the functions that it holds and other information and this object is like this object of type student will be associated to every student object let's say i have 100 student all of them would have a type attribute all of them will point to the student type object that i have right so this is a low cardinality highly referenced object because student type will be there across all the students that i have so what if we cache the type objects low cardinality highly referenced thing we cache that right this is a place like if you cache the if you cache this particular thing if you cache the type objects you will still get a significant performance boost because it would not have to go time and read that particular location it can just access it immediately <clears throat> but this is a very crude example in real programming languages let's say in c python source code or if you explore basically chrome v8 java engine a uh, chrome v8 javascript engine what you will find is that how does your python runtime know that a is an integer b is a string like you created a equal to 10 b equal to hello how would it know that a is an integer b is a string it has a very similar structure to this very similar right so that's where the data types of your languages the type objects for your data type in your languages can be cached through this you will get not significant but a minor performance boost Right. and this is how you would try to gain as much of performance for your garbage collection for your use case as possible and it totally depends on if your application actually exhibits temporal locality or spatial locality it needs at least one of them at least one of them for your caching to be effective otherwise you are just adding caching unnecessarily right okay nice that's it that's it for this one i hope uh you understand caching very well now like around temporal locality special locality now you whenever you are designing anything not just garbage collector be it any application out there uh web2 application web3 application like all the fancy things like uh, uh social media live streaming what not and if you plan to add cache over there just see do you have at least temporal locality or special locality if you have it then you cache it otherwise it's very futile if you add something to the cache eventually it is neither never going to be accessed or if it is going to be accessed after a very long time and it is already evicted so you are just wasting your cpu cycles into doing something which is not fruitful right so yeah just keep those things in mind whenever you are designing your next big system so yeah that's it that's it for this one uh, uh if you guys like this video give this video thumbs up if you guys like the channel give this channel a sub i post three in depth engineering videos every week and i'll see you in the next one thanks a ton